pinion angle and engine install angle. Why do they matter? And more importantly, how do we set them on a fresh build? Let's talk about it. What's up guys? We are back with another Tech Tip Thursday. And today we're gonna to talk about pinion angle and engine install angle, and specifically, how do we set them on a fresh engine install? Now, before we get started, I wanna cover a few things about pinion angle so that everyone's kinda of on the same page here, starting with what it is. At each end of your drive shaft, there's a universal joint. And those universal joints allow the drive shaft to move with the rear end as the rear end travels through its range of motion. Now, pinion angle is just the angle of those universal joints measured at the rear of the drive shaft or at the front of the drive shaft, between the drive shaft and transmission output shaft. Now that we know what it is, why is it important? And better yet, what happens when it's wrong? Before I answer this, let's watch this quick video from our friends over at Spicer Drivetrain Products. These guys have been experts on drive lines for over 115 years, and they have a great visual to better explain exactly what happens here. I'm Dave Napick, the national trainer for Dana's Aftermarket Group. Welcome to Spicer Garage. Today we're going to talk about non-uniform velocity and the effects it has on a drive shaft. Non-uniform velocity is the difference in rotational speed in the input source, like a transmission, the drive shaft, and the axle. The difference in velocity or rotational speed can lead to vibrations in the drive shaft, which can cause significant damage to the drive train. Damage can occur at the transmission and or the drive axle. Non-uniform velocity occurs for two reasons. When the angles between the yoke at the transmission and the yoke at the axle are not in proper alignment or when the drive shaft is not phased correctly. The phasing of the drive shaft is related to the position of the yoke ears on either end of the shaft. That is why it is important to mark the position of the drive shaft yokes prior to disassembly of the drive shaft to ensure it is reassembled correctly. The system we have here represents the drive shaft of the vehicle and will help us demonstrate non-uniform velocity and the vibrations it causes. We have an electric motor as the transmission represented by the front sprocket. We have the drive shaft represented by the middle sprocket and the last sprocket represents the axle. When we have no angle in a drive shaft, the speed should be constant. That's exactly what's happening with no angle. Everything travels at a constant speed. When we put unequal angles in the drive shaft, we cause the rotational speed to change. The front yoke gears, the input yoke gears, travel in a perfect circle at a constant rotational speed. However, the output yoke gears now travel in the ellipse, causing an inconsistent rotational speed. Notice how the output yoke gears speed up and slow down twice right per revolution. We can see and hear the effects this has on the drive shaft. This inconsistent rotational speed is then transferred through the drive shaft to the axle, causing a vibration. What we want is the front and rear angles to cancel each other out. When the rear angle is equal to or within one degree of the front angle, the rotational speed realigns and eliminates the vibration in the system. As you saw in the video from Spicer, when the pinion angles are incorrect, this causes the drive shaft to travel at half speed for half a rotation and then double speed for the other half of the rotation. This causes not only vibrations and drivetrain issues, but remember that our wheels are directly linked to the drive shaft through the rear end and the axles, which means the wheel is trying to do the same exact thing, which causes the tire to unload and causes traction problems as well. So for what your pinion angle should be set to, this really depends on how you're gonna use the vehicle. The general kind of accepted range is one and a half to three degrees. That said, the pinion angle for a drag car might be different than that of a trophy truck, and that trophy truck might be different than a street-driven vehicle, so you always wanna double-check these numbers. 
As for what your engine install angle should be, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video, and it means a lot less than you think it does. Now that we've covered all of that, I'm going to show you how we set pinion angle and engine install angle on a fresh install. Now we don't have any motor mounts or transmission mount to kind of give us a guideline here. This is completely from scratch. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that our rear end is installed at ride height, centered, level, and neutral, meaning the face of the housing should be perpendicular to the ground. Next, we're gonna need a laser pointer and something to hold it. I made this one out of some flat stock and a couple inches of tube. Make sure that they are square and welded up. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be square. Drill a couple holes in the base and bolt it to your flywheel or flex plate, then toss the laser in it. Now you can install the engine. Make sure that it is square and centered before you set the angle of the engine. Once the engine is in place, fire up your laser pointer and adjust the angle of the engine until the laser pointer is pointing dead at the center of the pinion yoke on your rear end. As you can see, I don't have a pinion installed, so I got this plate from ICT Billet that has the pinion location marked. This is the installed position of the engine. You can go ahead and lock it in with your motor mounts or your motor and mid plates. After everything is locked in place, check the angle of the engine. Ours says three degrees. So this means we have a front pinion angle of zero degrees because our laser is squared with our flex plate and a rear pinion angle of three degrees. If we were to leave it like this, we would have all those issues that we saw in that video from Spicer. So to adjust this, we can roll the rear end down one and a half degrees. That will give us one and a half degrees front and a one and a half degree rear pinion angle. There you have it. It really is that simple, guys. When it comes to engine angle, I see people asking online all the time what the engine angle should be. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there is no correct answer. There are so many variables uh, between engine install height, wheelbase, tire height, that there just is no standard answer. It really doesn't matter except when it comes to calculating the pinion angle. So do not install your engine off of this. And more importantly, do not install your engine based on some random numbers that someone else on the internet used on their car. Your car will probably be different. If you wanna see this process in action, check out our engine install video. I'll put a link right there in the description below for you guys. If you like this video, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, if you have questions or comments, drop them below as well. That's it for this one. Thanks, guys.